الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله إمام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين الذي بعث إلى الأحمر والأسود والذي تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كان هارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سلك طريقهم وسار على نهجهم ودعا بدعوتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My brothers and sisters, it is indeed a moment to be reminded of the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who are conscious of their maker shall indeed be successful. We ask the Almighty to grant us the ability to be conscious of Him in a way that it makes us increase the good deeds we engage in and decrease that which will displease our maker. Brothers and sisters, every single one of us in life would like to achieve so many things. Some of these Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to achieve whilst other things He does not allow us to achieve. And in the process, we are tested through and through in so many different ways, sometimes through our health and sometimes through our wealth, sometimes through our social relations, sometimes family members, various other issues. Some we can do a little bit about and others we cannot really do much about besides calling out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Brothers and sisters, this is in line with the declaration of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherein He says, Indeed, I will test every single one of you. Indeed, I will test you. And this test in so many ways, He says, Indeed, I will test every single one of you with some of hunger, some of fear, with loss of life, with lack of produce. So many things mentioned in different places in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Good news to those who are forbearant, those who bear what is known as sabr. Sabr does not just translate as the term patience, but it includes forbearance as well. It also includes restraint. So, good news to those who restrain themselves, to those who are forbearant, to those who bear sabr, those who utter the term, we indeed belong to Allah and unto Him is our ultimate return. Because no matter what difficulty you and I will go through, and we will definitely go through difficulties, there is not a single one of us in existence that can comfortably say that I have had no problems or issues in my entire life. But it all depends on how we handle these issues with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember, Allah says, good news to those who are forbearant, those who realize that they are ultimately going to return to Allah and this life itself is very limited. So even if I have the biggest problems in the whole world, I need to know that life itself is so limited after which I will return to my maker who created me in the first place. And the mere fact that I am conscious of this should help me tag along every single day with hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, it is the plan of Allah to test us. And one of the reasons why He tests us in so many different ways is for us to get closer to Him. And this is why a mu'min, a believer who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the minute he has an issue and a problem, he raises his hands to Allah. Perhaps he would fulfill some salah as the hadith says when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
was overtaken by any form of concern, immediately he rushed to salah. The Prophet ﷺ's example is so powerful. We should be achieving coolness and calmness by linking ourselves more with our Maker when we have an issue. And this is why sometimes the weakness of man is such that when everything is moving smoothly according to our own whims and fancies, at times it does happen for a moment, we tend to forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many of us are guilty of when we had a problem, we used to be regular with salah, we left our sins, we made our tawbah. The minute the problem was sorted out, may Allah protect us. We allowed shaitan to dilly-dally with us once again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So because of that, when you have an issue, consider yourself fortunate to be turning to Allah. So many of us, we would get up for salah to tahajjud, but that was only when we had an issue. So wouldn't it be a gift of Allah to keep us in that particular condition so that we can continue to get up for Salat al-Tahajjud, thereby achieving closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would like on one hand to be alleviated of the suffering we are going through. And on the other hand, we are reading Salah which might just stop the minute that suffering is gone. This is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا ابْتَلَاهُ when Allah loves someone, that is when He tests the person. These tests draw people even closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, when I have a difficulty of any nature, and like I have just said, some of these problems are financial matters. I'm sure a lot of us might be having some form of pressure of a different level depending on what we've done with ourselves. And sometimes it's of a social matter, perhaps a marital issue, perhaps with our children, perhaps parents and relatives, perhaps our workplace, whatever else it is. These are tests from Allah and sometimes it's a health matter. May Allah grant cure to all those who are struggling in any way. Sometimes it is the taking away of the life of those who are close to us. These are tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine the warm tears that roll down the cheeks when we have did this type of difficulty. Don't you think it's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where sometimes the hairs will stand when we listen to some recitation because the heart is softened by certain problems. So consider a problem a gift of Allah. Not always is it a punishment, but for a believer it is actually a means of earning greater closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why another narration says, The greater reward is with the greater test. <coughs> so remember when your test is greater, it is a greater opportunity for you and I to become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all in every single way. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible for us to lead a life where whatever we want to happen, will happen. That is impossible. The whole reason why paradise has been promised to the believers <coughs> is because in paradise we will get what we want. But in this dunya, in this world, that is impossible. It is not going to happen. It has not happened. Remember, when tests come in your direction, rise to the occasion to get closer to your Maker. That is the time. Get closer to your Maker. Yes, we pray for all those who are struggling across the globe, and I'm sure they are praying for us when we go through struggles as well. But at the same time, a person who allows a difficulty to make him depressed to the degree that he becomes more distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person at loss. Don't allow that to happen. Don't worry. After every night, there is a day that shall follow. When the darkest hour of the night is now in place, you should know that daybreak is very near. Your problem cannot last up to the end of time. No, it will definitely come to an end. These are the tests. And this is why if you take a look across the globe, you will find those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It seems like they have bigger issues, but in reality, they are content. They have a certain contentment that their belief in Allah keeps them going. Whereas a person who does not have belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the smallest thorn pricking his finger would make him so uneasy and restless that he would not be able to even say the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of how angry he has become. 
And this is why as soon as something happens, we are taught to relate it to Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. You've been informed of something sad, something that did not go your way. Two things you remember. One is, Allah has given every single one of us a different capacity to deal with whatever comes in our direction. But that is from Allah. The brain I have and you have, where did it come from? It came from Allah. The physical capacity and capability I have, the ability to speak that I have, the finance that I might have, it's come from Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires us to use whatever He has given us to try our best to protect ourselves from the suffering and to help others. So we reach out to people. That is all within what Allah has given us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the means, we use it. But there will come a stage and a point beyond which you and I can do nothing about. Absolutely nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. In that case, the thing we could do is dua, which means call out to Allah to handle whatever it is for us because it's beyond my capacity. So many things are occurring on the globe that you and I have no option but to pray about. Or perhaps we might be able to reach out in a beautiful way. But that's about it. Sometimes things happen within our own home. Sometimes we have marital turbulence. Sometimes we would like to get married and we cannot. These are typical examples that affect our brothers and sisters on the globe. Let's remember, even if you are trying your best, do not take dua and supplication out of the equation. Because that is what will grant us the correct use of the capacity that Allah has given us. Let me give you an example. If from amongst us there is someone who would like to get married, and mashallah it happens a lot to the sisters seeing that they may be greater in number than the brothers, and sometimes they happen to just sit home and relax, and just make dua to Allah. In that particular case, it is an insult to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to call out to Him alone without using the capacity He has given you to do something permissible about it. So I cannot just sit at home and say, Allah, I need a thousand pounds. And you're looking at the ceiling and imagining that just now it's going to drop from the air conditioning unit. That is an insult to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what you do, you make a dua, Ya Allah, I need a thousand pounds. Ya Allah, I need to get married. And you make an effort based on the amount of energy Allah has given you to do something about it so that you can now try to achieve with the capacity that Allah has blessed you with. And then you say, Ya Allah, help me to use the faculties you've given me. Help me to use the energy you've given me. Help me to use the blessings you've blessed me with in the direction that will be beneficial for me in the dunya as well as in the akhirah. So there are so many du'as that are mentioned in the Qur'an as well that will help the, the suffering of a human being in different ways. Some people are depressed because they are becoming old and they are not yet married. Some people are depressed because perhaps years down the line they still haven't paid the debt that they owe. May Allah make it easy for us all. Those in debt, may Allah grant you alleviation. Those who are not married, may Allah grant you ease and grant you spouses who will be the coolness of your eyes. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if you look at the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you will find so many supplications. Even the supplication of marriage, for example, where Allah subhanahu wa taala makes mention of it in such a beautiful way. Rabbana, wal-ladina yaqulun Rabbana, hab lana min azwajina wa dunyatina qurata aqiyun, wa jalna lil muttaqin imama. Allah speaks about the true worshippers of Allah, those who call out to Him, constantly saying, Oh Allah, grant us from our spouses, our family members, those who will be the coolness of our eyes and make us the leaders of the righteous. If you take a careful look at this, even though you might be in a happy condition, remember Allah because your test is coming. Allahu Akbar, may Allah protect us and make it easy. If you think you're not going to be tested, you have not understood the plan of Allah. This world is a world of testing. And this is why Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقُتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ 
I have not created mankind nor jinn kind except that they worship me. Which means they work according to my plan. Part of the plan of Allah and we've heard about it slightly earlier is that this place here, this dunya, this world we are in right now is a world full of tests. And once we graduate from here and go into the life after death, we will be able to achieve the results of this particular examination. May Allah make it easy for us. So importantly, for us to call out to Allah, whether you have the capacity or not, we still call out to Allah because ultimately, the amount of acceptance and the amount of goodness and the amount of profit that we will achieve is in the hands of Allah, although our duty is to utilize the energy that Allah has blessed us with in the process. And this is why we say, on both occasions, we make dua, whether you have the capacity or you don't have the capacity. Sometimes you will not have the ability except to make dua. And the other times you have the ability to do something about your situation and condition and still make dua. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us through the trials and tribulations in this particular dunya. What is of utmost importance, my brothers and sisters? Remember those who are struggling more than you and I across the globe. What we are going through today is nothing compared to what they may be going through. Remember them. The bare minimum is pray for them. So many people are struggling. So many are homeless. So many do not have meals. So many have lost family members. And sometimes they don't even know where they are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us savior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So many things happening yet we Alhamdulillah, the favor of Allah upon us. We are sitting calm, in peace, breathing much air. Alhamdulillah, food is so much that our leftovers would feed all those who don't have food across the globe. That's how much food we have. Yet, we sit sometimes thinking that my life is coming to an end. I really don't know what's going on. My brother, your problem is small. The owner of solutions, just call out to him. Just re remain with the link with him and strengthen that link and you find how easy things become. Brothers and sisters, do not become depressed by the few difficulties you have in the world. No matter what it is, I don't know the particular issues each one of us is going through. But I tell you, Allah knows your issue. Allah knows what you're going through. Allah knows the difficulty you are facing. Who is harassing you or what is happening to you? He knows it very well. And He knows you personally even better than you know yourself. And He knows why you are going through it. All you need to do, understand His plan. Turn to Him, call out to Him, become closer to Him in the process by the will of Allah. This would have been such a big blessing in disguise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. May He make us from those who realize that every opportunity we get, we gain closeness to Allah. Every opportunity we get, we become closer to our Maker whom we shall return to the day we return to Him. Imagine recognizing us, He calls out, He calls us over and grants us a special share that he has made mention of subhanallah that is the day we will really have been successful my brothers and sisters I end by saying may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create ease for every single one of you and may he create ease for every single one of those on the globe who are going through difficulty and may we become from amongst those who are closer and closer to Allah as the days pass may he protect us from becoming further away أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم